This video is going to go over one of your major, most important tools, and that's selections. And there's a bunch of different ways to select stuff. In every bit of software, you're going to see uh, a variety of ways to do selections, and they're always coming up with new, more advanced selection tools. So the difficulty with selections is that we can look at this car and we can say, hey, that's a yellow car. I want to take that yellow car and grab it. Um, but your computer doesn't have a brain, so it can't really do that. That's like the thing that computers are, are, are sort of medium bad at. They're getting better all the time. Um, but we have to do some manual selections. So this first way is called the lasso tool. And you can think of the lasso tool as a pair of scissors, basically. You just run around, just cut out whatever you want with the lasso tool, and that's it. It's fairly simple. Um, and if you're sort of steady with your hand, you can actually get pretty good selections with the, with the lasso tool. And I use it all the time because it's just so fast and so easy and so direct that it allows you to do a lot of stuff like quickly. And for me, that's important. So this is what that, that tool looks like. Um, among the lasso tools, you have other ones. There's also the magnetic lasso tool, which has been around a long time in Photoshop. And it tries to basically perceive an edge um, automatically as you run around the edge that you kind of want to select. Just not really clicking or holding anything down, but hovering over it creates those selection points. And you see the selection points kind of follow. Um, you can modify the selection later, but um, you know every, every update of Photoshop, they kind of work on this tool and it gets a little better. Um, so without making any additions to the selection, here's kind of what it looks like. Um, and you can see it's a little glitchy, which is kind of cool. I love finding glitches like this um, through the simplest tools because they can add a lot of style to your pieces. Um, if you're doing something that's not super realistic um, and you're having more fun with an image and more fun with collaging, I think it's, it's great to use glitchy selections. Um, so, and just so we can remember to write all these down on here. So that's the magnetic lasso. And um, selecting the right layer, this is the free lasso. I call it like the free form lasso. Most, it's just the lasso tool. So it's your pair of scissors, right? Um, your next one is actually your polygonal lasso tool and what you do is you click and you create straight line selections around objects. Super useful, especially when you're doing anything geometric, uh, like if you're selecting buildings or something like that. This is amazing. But what's cool is if you had a mouse and you wanted to like create a digital painting of some kind, you could use this to, to lay out your basic shapes and modify them with the brush tool. Um, or the eraser tool and like I think that would be a, a fantastic way to go about it using these um, strict geometric shapes bucket filling them or painting into them and then um, moving on to the next shape um, and you can see every time you kind of change direction you just click and it adds a point and you get around to the, to the end you click it together and it makes the selection Sometimes you lose the selection after you click it together because it like double clicks accidentally. Usually if you hit the undo button, you get it back. So here's that here's that selection and copy and paste it out, put on another layer, and it's actually pretty darn good. Um, it's, you know, it's not perfect because you're taking approximations of curved lines with straight lines, but you know, it's, it's there, right? Um, so those are your basics. Another uh, basic fun one is to just like modify selections. So by holding um, shift and alt, you can subtract from or add to the selection. So if you were feeling like lazy, like you couldn't select um, everything perfectly, you could just kind of loosely go around everything and then start adding and subtracting to the selections. And I find that super useful if my hand's tired or if I just need a really precise selection, I'll go through, I'll even like zoom in and start selecting this way and get everything just really perfect. 
Um, and you can do things like if there's a cutout, like you want to get those holes through the through the windows, you can cut those out um, with the selection tool. So that's that's how you kind of add and subtract from selections. So the selection is not like a finite thing. Another one that's been in Photoshop for a long time is called the Magic Wand tool. Um, and what the Magic Wand tool does is it, it allows you to click on a color and it just sort of selects a bunch of stuff close to it. Um, and it'll select that usually with stuff with whatever's kind of touching that color because it kind of knows that you want like that particular area selected. You can also hold shift and alt to add and subtract from that and it'll add uh, any colors that you kind of select that are near it. And I like it. It's fun. It's really quick and it's super useful. Um, it's also nice to do more expressive things because it won't select the entirety of a particular area necessarily so you could create more like arbitrary color things while keeping the shape so you can all, you can already see like this already looks like something that you would use for an advertisement or like an illustration because it's not the full thing it doesn't have all the detail it's approximated um, and it's already a little bit stylized so you can imagine like you could take this and change the color of it or whatever you needed to do to create an interesting image. So that's the magic wand. Um, and there's a couple of versions of the magic wand we'll run through those. Okay. Um, and other bits of software have sort of like similar things to it. So this is the quick selection tool. Basically you just click on stuff, run it around, and it selects um, whatever you kind of click on. And the advantage is that it's really fast. It's not like super perfect, but hey, you know, that took under a second to select the car and get it real close. And I'll take it, you know. If you have to move fast and it doesn't really matter and you're just sketching, like why not use the quick selection tool? It's amazing. Um, the other thing that you have that's kind of newer in Photoshop is um, is the, uh, the object selection tool. And what's neat about the object selection tool is it's part of the magic wand. Go to object selection. You can basically like put a box around what you want, give it a second to process, and it selects stuff. Um, you know, so I go around the whole car, put a box around the car, it for the most part selects the car. And that may even be faster than the quick selection tool. So um, all of these tools are, are not necessarily perfectly accurate, but that's like okay because what you're getting is something um, useful and usable and something close and that is really important when you're working digitally is to get close and refine and so running back through you got your free lasso you got your magnetic lasso right you've got your um, polygon lasso or polygonal lasso you've got your magic wand tool You've got the quick selection tool, and you've got your object selection tool. So those are all basically variants of two basic tools. There are other ways to do selections, and we'll run through those real quick. Um, the main one um, that's really pretty useful is to select a color range. And this one's nice because what this allows you to do is take the eyedropper, drop a color range, and then you can see in this little preview area what it's going to select. Um, so you can see it's selecting the yellow in the car and the yellow behind that, um, which is kind of nice because this allows you, if you wanted to change that yellow to something else, you could change it. Um, you can preview it differently. You can show the image in the little preview box, whatever you need to do. Changing the fuzziness allows you to select more stuff that's related. So if you wanted to get all the yellow, you would turn the fuzziness all the way up and it would select everything that's related to yellow and close and has a little bit of yellow in it, um, which is fantastic because that allows you to select whole entire color ranges. Like here, if I wanted to select like this, this dark gray, um, it'll show me what I'm going to select and 
it's it's a, a fair amount of the image and it'll be really useful um, to maybe select that instead. I can turn the fuzziness up and select a bunch of it. Okay, see how much that's selected. So I can copy that and put it in a new layer um, and you can see it's going to be this kind of ghostly image of the car, which is kind of neat um, in and of itself. So I could do something arbitrary behind it while keeping that car shape. Um, or I could do things like I could take this with the move tool, move it, line it up, snap it into place with the old image. Then I could do another selection method, which we haven't really mentioned yet, which is if you hold control and click on that layer icon, it selects everything in that layer, um, which is kind of neat. And um, Oh yeah, I kind of screwed up first. Narrating videos. There we go. Control, and you select it. And it selects everything in that layer. And then I can do things like paint over that layer. Um, which is kind of neat. So, if I do that, um, that gives me some options for how I can make things look. So I can select that. Um, I could select any other layer and paint on it. But let's say that um, that I want to sort of do something arbitrary with that particular layer, right? I could select that last layer that I had, I can paint into it real quick, change that color, then I could leave it on top of the old layer and um, that would preserve some of the car but lift those, lift those blacks which is kind of neat. It's changing the whole image and it gives you some interesting options of where to take an image that maybe you hadn't thought of uh, before and gives you a good way to, to get into modifying individual parts of an image.